Hello guys! This is a second uh, video tutorial for my stitching along about uh, floral frame uh, for the photo. So this is my pattern transferring process and uh, I transfer my patterns using hidden erasable gel pen. You can use uh, Pilot Friction, this is a famous uh, brand or you can use some other similar pens like that and it's gonna be cheaper so I use uh, I like to use this um, light pad I use it for <laughs> about five years already and it works very well for me so First time when I was transferring my pattern, I was using the window and it was not comfortable for my hands and I knew that I will be doing hand embroidery for a long time, so I, I invested in this light bed. It was, it was not expensive, it's uh, really cheap, you can find it for $15, maybe $20 plus shipping, something like that. Uh, so I placed my... Uh, uh, paper, um, the pattern transferred to the paper and I printed, printed it on uh, staples and I attached uh, the paper using um, washi tapes and uh, then I attached my fabric also using washi tapes. I made sure that the picture is in the center and so I have a lot of uh, fabric around to place it in the hoop and I'm finishing tracing, tracing this pattern. This uh, light pad has three levels of light so depending on the fabric that you use you can choose the perfect level which is suitable for you. It took me about one hour to transfer this pattern, so it's not for too long, but you, if you don't like um, draw, hand drawing, you can print it on the stick and stitch stabilizer. If you have a printer, if not, you just can go to the place where you can print it and uh, that's it. So I'm done with pattern transferring and I'm taking off my fabric. And I'm going to be placing it in the hoop. The washi tape, uh, it's comfortable to use because it's, it doesn't stick too much to your fabric and you can remove it uh, very easy. You can find uh, the link, all the links to materials I use on my website embroideryartbynot.com uh, so I made a page with all the favorite materials I like to use and you can uh, browse all those materials if you like something you can um, order by the links on that page so uh, one more thing to know I sew it um, I added a little uh, string uh, here and here because I noticed that this fabric square fabric uh, it wasn't enough for my uh, hoop which I'm gonna use the hoop a little taller so I added uh, a little bit of fabric uh, it's just a temporary solution uh, for the time which uh, I will use for stitching and then I can remove it when I will be framing in some uh, uh, frame or I will leave it and it will be framed using this fabric as well so um, this is a solution if you have a little short fabric so I'm gonna use those square hoops uh, by Norge. 
I really love it. If you have some smaller hoops, you can also use it. Uh, but I recommend to bind uh, the inner circle like I did here. So the fabric will sit uh, tight uh, and it will not move. You will not have to stretch it uh, again and again. And uh, so uh, I use it with all the hoops uh, which I work with. This is my working hoop. For the hoops I use for uh, framing, I don't do it. I just do it for the hoops which I'm working with. And usually uh, for this hoop you cannot do this way, but uh, it is good anyway. Uh, it usually keeps the, the fabric tight. So I place one side of this hoop on the back side and then I place another one on the top and you push from the top you need to make sure that uh, it's centered so I see I see as I have some fabric on the right and on the left and on the top and on the bottom it wouldn't be enough for stretching so when you are stretching you just need to stretch a little bit here and there so uh, this uh, square shape is not uh, distorted you need it to be uh, a proper shape so I tied a little bit not too much and I stretch it from all the sides let's see if it will keep the fabric tight all the time if it's not enough you can uh, stitch it uh, to the hoop I will see if I will need like uh, stretching it or not little by little you stretch your fabric from all the sides and so it should be drum tight like this so when you stitch uh, it will not create any wrinkles so that's it if you have <laughs> cats uh, in the studio like me you probably have some fur on the fabric or something like that you can easily remove it with this uh, sticky roller there are some fabric cuts on it so it will not be um, distracting you from embroidery so your work will stay clean so now I'm ready for stitching uh, I will be stitching uh, some element today with you let me fix my hoop in the hoop stand so I will be using hoop stand because the frame is big so it will be not comfortable to keep it in your hands so uh, if uh, the hoop was smaller I usually use it to keep it in my hands but this time I'm gonna use hoop stands and I have two hoop stands like this I attach them to the table and uh, see how they look like you can turn them so this is where your table will go 
in this part and uh, this part will keep your hoop and I also like that I can turn my work and flip it see okay so I will fix it here I can flip to the back side. I can make it a little bit taller so I can actually flip it. A little bit more. Yeah, so you can you have a quick access to the back side. You can turn it back and forth. And this is how I'm gonna be stitching. Okay, let's choose the colors. Okay, I will place this in another way like this, so I will be comfortable to do so. So here are the colors which I have. I have a lot. <laughs> so it's not the final, uh, not uh, the final color, cho color choice, but I will be just improvising, choosing the colors, and I just place them on the fabric and see if I like them or not. I see that orange and yellow will go really nice on this kind of uh, color fabric and I definitely can use also some shadows for pink like this for some flowers and for the leaves I also have this color choice probably this one is good and this one for those uh, leaves and I also have some variated strats which I would like to use for leaves maybe I will use uh, those here is a nice color I just place it this way and I see which I like the most I need only three of them so for those leaves those kind of leaves and for those leaves I will probably use some uh, shiny strats like those I like those and I think I will implement some of them here maybe this one, maybe this one, I don't know yet I will be doing it in the end so first I will use some of those what do you guys think? What, which color do you like the most? This one is nice. And the blue one. So this or this. And this one has more variations of colors. Probably I will use this one. So I'm gonna stitch this leaf today with you and I will use uh, DMC uh, uh, embroidery needles and it depends on the amount of the threads which I will use let me 
open Instagram on my laptop so I will see your comments. If you guys have questions, you can ask me in the chat. Um, you can use all six strands if you want, but um, I think that uh, it's not really economical way of uh, using embroidery threads. And those threads are pretty uh, expensive, it's uh, Cosmos Seasons. So I will not use all six strands, I will use only three strands of floss. So it will give a nice uh, texture. I really like this color. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty sure it with this color, so I will start from this. I have some bobbins finally, so I can uh, put those embroidery threads uh, to the bobbins. For now, I will just uh, be using threads directly from the skein. So I have six strands, and I will need to separate it in order to have a nice and neat. Um, satin stitch so the threads will lay uh, properly and flat and it's not gonna be twisted so I separate it one by one and then I will just uh, put them together and start stitching And I will start from the lightest shade. So I will make a knot on this part. If you don't like knots, you can start uh, your set without knots. I will show you how I do it. These are the needles which I'm working with and I'm going to use the medium needle from the em embroidery needles set. So I usually lick my thread to thread it and I thread my needles this way. <laughs> this is the way how my uh, Grandma taught me, but you can use some needle straddles if you want. So you have threaded your needle, one part of the thread is uh, shorter, you want to leave it shorter, and another part is longer, this is the thread you will be working with. Okay, which uh, one should we start? Probably this one on the left side or on the left, right? Probably this one will be comfortable for me to stitch. Okay, I will move it, you guys to the left and zoom it a little bit so you will see all the everything what I do. You want to start your needle, your thread, sorry, <laughs> without knots, so you can do this way. No matter matter how many uh, threads do you use, you can always use this method. So I do a running stitch. And 
and now I go back and split the previous stitch I made. I do it in the place where I know that it will be covered by my stitches later. So this is enough to fix your thread. And now I start stitching the leaf. Should I zoom it a little bit more? Okay, let me let me zoom it more. So I do, I made a straight stitch uh, by the center and now I will fill this sleeve on the right and on the left side. You can do like a satin stitch around, a satin stitch on the right side first and then on the left side or you can do a fish bone stitch, it's also a nice stitch to fill the leaves. So I will show the satin stitch method first. Yeah, I really like this fabric too. This color is so juicy. I didn't stitch on this kind of color of fabric before, but... How do you print the design in the fabric? Uh, I transferred it using my uh, uh, light pad and uh, heating erasable gel pen. You can see on the beginning of this video, I will save this video and you will see the process, uh, how I did it actually. I really like to use variated threads and um, those threads are really light and um, I, I hope that uh, the color tradition uh, is gonna be like noticeable <laughs> I don't know maybe on the camera you see only white threads but it's actually uh, just light green color And it, all the threads are different. Um, here I can see that the color is changing uh, very slowly. Uh, there are some threads with, where the color is changed uh, quickly, so you just need to adapt for the uh, threads. So now I jump to the top of the leaf and continue filling this leaf. I like to feel it from the uh, top to the bottom. Uh, later, if you want, you can add a straight stitch in the center of this uh, leaf. Maybe you will want to uh, use some uh, another color of the strat, maybe darker. Or, if I'm gonna use metallic threads, I can use some metallics here. I didn't choose any bright colors because I want... Uh, I just want it to be light and because of the fabric color it's really bright. So I just, I will try to go with those colors and I will see how it looks. It's just uh, improvisation. If I will not like it, I can cut it off and start over with some other color. It's not critical. <laughs>
I have to admit that uh, it's really nice and pleasant to stitch uh, using this uh, fabric. My needle goes very easy through this fabric together with all those uh, threads. So I don't feel any resistance and I don't have to push. So it's a really nice fabric to, to work with. This is uh, Kono cotton. I use it for the first time. <laughs> I unpacked my package today and there is so many colors. I really like it. How it feels to stitch on this fabric. Usually this uh, fabric um, you, is used for um, with those blankets I forgot how they called Can you dis disponibilize that fabric? Uh, what does it mean? <laughs> I don't know that word <laughs> What can I do with this fabric? Disponibilize what is this? Maybe I pronounce it the uh, wrong way. <laughs> Sorry. English is not my first uh, language. If you don't like that it's a little bit transparent like this, I can see my fingers on the back. Um, so you can use another layer of the fabric. Yeah, it's a quilt fabric and it's 100% uh, cotton and it's uh, very nice for hand embroidery. I really like it. And um, also, if you want, you can use another layer of the fabric. So if you will be jumping with your thread here and there from one place to another, if it's a little bit visible from the front, you can use another layer of fabric and stitch on both of layers. So uh, you will not worry about that. And it will add uh, some kind of uh, stabilization for your fabric, like a stabilizer, you know, on the back. Uh, hi, can you please send me the link of your shop? Uh, there is a link in my profile. You will find it in the profile. Oh, I see how the color is changed right here. I really love this moment. <laughs> it's so satisfying. And you can use those variety threads uh, for your um, how you want. You can um, see um, the color is changes only here and it's green on, on the bottom and when I will be moving here, stitching here, the another half of the leaf will look a little bit different from the right side. See? It's already look different. It's slightly because um, the threads are light but Maybe if it was a brighter thread, you will notice. You would notice it, and it gives an effect like a, like this leaf uh, is alive. You know. <laughs> um, I wish they sold 12 inch squares, but I couldn't find it. Uh, it would eliminate having to sew the extra strips as you had to. Yeah, for such a little bit bigger embroidery projects, um, it's uh, too small, a little bit small. But uh, another way, they have so many colors in the set, so I couldn't stand <laughs> to not buy it, so <laughs> I bought it. And you just uh, reduce your pattern size and so it will fit uh, for the 8 inch hoop. It's perfectly fits for 8 inch hoop. 
and um, just adapt with this size yeah I, I was also looking for 12 inch squares and they just don't make it uh, probably this is the biggest size of the squares they do and I really like having a, a lot of uh, colors of the fabric uh, from one purchase I don't have to purchase uh, a few meters of each colors you know it's very comfortable to have this is this fabric cotton yes it's uh, cotton fabric it's Kona cotton I can show you the label where is this oh yeah so this is the package it came with And it's Kona Cotton Solids, a greenhouse palette, 10 squares, 54 pieces, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I really love this thread as well. This is... Um, let me show you if you didn't see maybe on the beginning this is Cosmos Seasons and this is a number I got some threads from my friend Melanie she sent me a, a big package of threads and it was the best gift <laughs> you can ever make for you can make for your stitching friend I don't know if those threads are available in Canada. I was looking for those and I I don't remember if I found something. So I, I have only links on Amazon for United States. Um, yeah, I moved to Canada and I thought maybe here in this country I will find more materials, different materials that I couldn't find in Ukraine. But I moved here and I figured out that it is the same, <laughs> uh, the same way hard to find something uh, to be delivered. It, it will be anyways delivered from the United States. So uh, the problem is not resolved yet. I really like this effect. All the colors I will finish this thread soon and I will start a new one and it will start from the light part and another part of the leaf will be lighter and I really like this this is so realistic and you don't need to change the thread to make this effect and you need only one uh, one skein of floss so, so it's it's really nice so I almost finished this thread probably I will finish on the back side let me switch to the back side I hope you will see the back side let me check so this is how my back side looks like so I did a seven stitch and your back side looks almost the same way as uh, your front side. And this is how I like to finish my threads on the back. I just go under my previous stitches, I don't touch the fabric at all, and I make a loop like this and I go through this loop and then it creates a little knot and I go under my previous stitches so this way I will hide my tails so my tail is here and I can cut the thread really close right there and I really like this method especially if you will be stitching on your clothing or something and you will not have any big knots, tails 
and anything it's really nice finishing on the back okay let's continue i really like to chat with you guys if you have some questions just ask me finally can call a summer <laughs> in Canada it was um, really sunny days but today it's uh, gloomy okay so that was a green side and I want to start from the lightest how did you learn to embroider from someone or self-taught? Um, half of it I learned like the basics of embroidery. I have learned from my grandma. I remember I was six years of old or something uh, when I first time trying tried it. Choose color palette and how many different colors would be enough to make it colorful but not too much. My fabric is Kana cotton, snow white. Um, if you stitch, let me let me answer the first question first, and then um, I will go through other questions. It's really great that you guys <laughs> have questions actually. So I learned it from my grandma. I had uh, I was six years old when I first tried hand embroidery. I saw a big uh, box with embroidery threads. Uh, they were in the skeins um, at my grandma's house, and I asked, "What is this for?" And uh, they were so colorful and shiny and so pleasant to touch. Uh, so my grandma, she usually embroidered a lot, but basically she did cross stitch and some of uh, the, uh, the works she did uh, hand using hand embroidery technique. Uh, and I saw um, a table, tablecloth uh, with uh, pencils and it was so beautiful and realistic and I wanted my grandma to teach me. She showed me uh, some basic stitches like uh, this satin stitch and she also taught me another stitch which I actually didn't use yet uh, but I need to, uh, you, you can use it for big areas like um, I don't remember, Romanian coaching stitch so it's like, it's not like long and short, it's like coaching but uh, another way uh, so I was uh, I remember how I stitched the blanket to the fabric when I first tried hand embroidery <laughs> and um, yeah my grandma had to undo this uh, work and uh, later I remember I tried embroidery in, at the school um, we did some composition it was uh, I forgot how this flower called so I'm from Ukraine so then later I remember when I was at class 7 or 8 I tried embroidery one more time and I stitched a girl face and it was really nice but I don't have this embroidery we had a fire at the home and everything was burned out so nothing left to show and then third time when I tried hand embroidery it was five years ago I picked it up as a hobby and I learned a lot of stitches 
from uh, YouTube, Instagram. So basically, uh, a lot of this I learned by myself. So half of it is taught by my grandma and half I, I was uh, self-taught. Yeah, definitely, I will save this uh, live stream. So this is how I learned hand embroidery. Um, and also I was doing a lot of cross stitch before, um, about 15 years at school and at the university. So I, probably I had a lot of time and I was doing a lot of, a lot of cross stitch. I had a lot of cross stitch pictures. Right now they all at uh, in, in the Ukraine, so I cannot show it. But I have all my embroidered embroidered hoops uh, with me here in Canada. So another question was about the fabric. Let me check this question. Uh -huh. about uh, white fabric and how to make it not too much colorful, right? Um, for white fabric, uh, you can also use some muted colors like this, or you can make it colorful, but you can separate uh, the picture from the colors of your embroidery using some white embroidery threads you can make a border like this really a little bit white border like this using coaching stitch you can use white threads you can use some metallics i like those you can a combination of those and use the coaching stitch to make a border and so this way you will separate your photo from the rest of uh, embroidery you see the photo can have a lot of green pink there can be some flowers and can be some blue sky you know and so this way you can separate it just make a border and maybe use some muted colors I also have an idea for the white fabric you can use all the blue colors only like only blue light blue dark blue all the blue shades you can see which color uh, it's uh, it's not uh, present in your photo for example yeah and use all the shades from the this color that's it Or you can use only pink colors or purple colors um, I'm really uh, it's it's really interesting to see guys how you will choose your own color palettes I really like this part when you start sharing your progress and when I see which colors did you choose Because uh, I can even not uh, imagine how this design can look using if somebody will use uh, different colors. So <laughs> if I chose uh, some color palette uh, for myself, uh, I can see only in this uh, way <laughs> for some reason. I don't know because I was concentrated on my own colors. But um, yeah. Sometimes people choose even the better colors that I chose, and this is an interesting fact. 
this is I also like. So if you embroider this uh, design with me, don't forget to share it in on Instagram and uh, don't forget to use a hashtag embroidery art by not and uh, you can even send this post uh, directly to me so I will see it because uh, I'm not really, um, I noticed that I don't see uh, when people mention me not always so I have to like search <laughs> for it for a long time so just uh, don't be shy um, send me in direct messages and I will share it in my stories I always glad to see what this your embroidery looks like I wonder if I chose <laughs> two light colors or I don't know how it's gonna look if you use uh, this um, color uh, or any other color of the fabric which is not white you can use um, only white colors for example and it also gonna look really great it's gonna stand out from the fabric and uh, your photo is also will stand out from your embroidery. I'm so grateful that you are uploading the live streams to YouTube because I'm so busy during the day that I'm not sure how many live streams uh, I'll be able to watch. Yeah guys, if you just join it and you didn't see the first part of this live stream, I upload those live streams to my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can watch it there. Anytime. Wherever you want. And uh, I also have a lot of other videos, so if you didn't see it yet, I want inviting you to, to visit my YouTube channel. I will also use some beads and I'm going to make this frame very colorful and shiny but not too much colorful so it's gonna stand out from the picture that I will use probably for those leaves I will need to use some uh, other color different from this I see maybe yellow one If you are new to hand embroidery and you are doing this kind of stitch for the first time, I would recommend to, to draw a stitch's direction. So it will guide you next time that when you will be stitching. Sorry, it's wrong. Usually I show, I uh, usually I don't uh, do it, but uh, I show it for beginners. 
so you can mark stitches direction this way and then when you stitch you just follow those directions so your leaf will look uh, natural and how you shouldn't do this is the way how you shouldn't do you shouldn't stitch this way see this way you will have to do short stitches and it will not look natural so don't do this way just look at the leaves and see where they like how they look and how to make your leaves embroidered leaves look similar to to how the real leaf looks like and if you have some gaps in the middle of the leaf you can add a straight stitch let me finish the slip and I will show you how it's gonna look like because it's a saddle stitch and not everyone will get uh, really nice edges if you don't have a lot of experience with this or you have not really good vision or something like that you can always fix your edges but by adding some straight stitch in the middle or you can add outline as well so for this stitch uh, uh, sorry leaf you can add straight stitch like this you can use another color of the thread um, because if you will use the same color like this it will not really be visible as you can see so I would add another thread color here so I will go back And I will finish my thread later so you can park it here as I did and you can finish later or you can continue with this uh, thread and jump to another place but for now I just park it my thread here <laughs> let it be there I don't know yet if I will finish it or continue what's gonna be I'm gonna do so I see that I need a little darker color to make uh, the stem for the sleeve and the central vein. Okay. No, it's like kind of the same color. Let me find this color. Thanks, Melanie. She likes my nails. have this color no it's too dark and too gloomy and I also have this one probably this is the perfect color in my work I use different embroidery threads this was uh, Cosmo seasons I also use DMC I also use Anchor threads. All of them are really great quality. And Anchor comes with in America. I noticed uh, first time saw them in this format. They usually in the format of the skein, but uh, I saw them here, and it's in the format of the spool like <laughs> like this. But uh, I find it really comfortable because you can fix your thread this way and you can display it really nice way you you if you will see my um, profile and the posts there you will see how I display those threads on the wall on the on, on my shelf yeah 
yeah, you can definitely mix um, threads. Um, it doesn't matter which brand is this. You just improvise, you choose colors and use what is back, looks the best for your eye. So I will also use three strands of cloth. I wouldn't use any darker color here because um, the fabric is already like kind of dark. So um, once I started <laughs> embroidering without knots, so I will not make any knots here as well. I will start from the back side and I will show you how. So this is my back side. To stitch from the from here to here so I will start my thread here I go under my stitches using a new thread see I don't have any uh, knots here and I do like some kind of uh, like a back stitch here once, two times, I can change the direction. So two times is enough. I see that my thread is already fixed and it's not moving and it will not go out from here. So I can start stitching and there is no knots on the back. Hi, do you display finished pieces in the hoop you are working in? Uh, I display a finished pieces in another hoops. Uh, the hoops which I'm working with, they have... Um, I bend my inner hoop and it looks like this. This is my working hoop and I do it for the fabric so it will sit tight here and will not move uh, and those hoops which I use for framing they can be without this uh, bending thing yeah I usually uh, frame my hoops in the hoop but uh, for this uh, work I would probably like to frame it in some traditional uh, frame. I will see if I will find some suitable frame for this. Um, I don't have any frames yet here, but um, I'll see. Or I will find some 10 uh, or 9 inch hoop because I don't have it. And maybe I will frame in that hoop. So for the central line, for the stem, I do backstitch and uh, it's gonna be whipped backstitch later. You can also use stem stitch here.
So I do a little bit of back stitches and when I see that I came close to the leaf, I do that straight stitch in the center. So I'm not jumping far away if I would do it separately. This central stitch uh, covers all the not even stitches in the center. So now my leaf looks like looks much better, I would say. So now from here I will do whipped back stitch so I go under my back stitches and it's gonna create a solid line which is really nice for stamps you can help with your finger from the back side you can push your fabric to the top a little bit so you will be able to slide with your needle only under the particular stitch so you will not touch any stitches around it because uh, you don't want to split anything else If this needle is too sharp for this, you can switch to another needle with blind, um, blind uh, point, so you will not speech, split anything else. So that's it. This leaf is finished. You have a lot of leaves like this around uh, the entire pattern as you can see here is the same kind of leaf and this is the same kind of leaf and here is it on this side here is it on this side so uh, you guys can stitch all of them today uh, using this uh, tutorial and um, we will continue tomorrow your stitch alongs are posted on youtube or will you post this on instagram too is this free stitch along it is free for you, Melanie, because you are my Patreon and you already have access to the pattern on Patreon. You can go to the Patreon, download this pattern from there and you are all set. But if you guys uh, not uh, subscribe to my Patreon, you can also take a part in this stitch along. You can find this pattern on my Etsy shop. I will give a link on my stories uh, every day after my stitch along so you guys if you want to join you can buy it from my Etsy shop I'm running a sale uh, you can get this pattern with 30% uh, discount today I have enjoyed watching your color choosing process and your stitching. I will be preparing my fabric today. Great! Yeah, guys, join me. I will be doing those live streams every day. I save those live streams on Instagram and I also post those live streams on YouTube as well. 
on YouTube they can appear a little bit later because I I can cut it, uh, edit it a little bit and it takes time to to be uploaded on YouTube so but anyways they all will appeal, uh, appear on the YouTube eventually <laughs> so see you thank you so much um, for joining me today and see you guys uh, tomorrow thank you so much for your questions and leave comments if you came later and you have some questions i will reply in the comments under this uh, live stream on uh, instagram and on youtube as well i will be happy to help okay see you bye see you tomorrow <laughs>